Born as the Dacho Keon D Stewardship and Guardians Program, uh, and in English, um, it translates to taking care of the Dacho. The Dacho Keon D Program started in 2014, and it started in uh, by having regional discussions with our member communities. So, we started working with our communities to outline a, a framework for stewardship, ways to take care of the land that reflected Dene perspectives. And they came up with um, principles to guide the way we would develop programming and plan. And so um, the first principle was the Dene laws, um, implementing and following our own Dene laws. Because in the, in the planning discussions that we had with elders and community leaders, they talked about how um, you know, Dene people have always been on the land and have always take care of, taken care of the land according to the Dene laws. So they said, we just need to keep implementing our laws so that we can govern the way we, uh, in, the way we take care of the land and the way we take care of each other. Mm -hmm. And then they talked about the importance of the Dene language to understand a Dene perspective. So they wanted the language to be put at the center of stewardship programming. And then lastly, they talked about youth and the importance of youth and mentoring them to be on the land in the Dene ways. So youth and elder mentorships became like sort of these guiding principles for our program. So it, it means that who we target becomes very broad because it yeah. means we can target babies all the way to elders yeah. um, in our programming when we're trying to develop land-based programming. So um, the other component of it, though, is also the the guardians component that we've been working with Decho Aram to do. And so that is um, focused on um, primarily on monitoring and doing monitoring that's meaningful to communities in our region to answer questions that they think is important, and it varies by community um, what kind of monitoring questions they're going to ask. And so um, in that sense that we're targeting like um, land users, um, people with traditional skills to get out on the land and do monitoring for our communities, um, and we're asking them sometimes to come into camps where they interact with youth and mentor them and teach them how they are doing monitoring. It also means that we're targeting researchers and like partners and like um, maybe even people outside of our communities to work with us and like uh, help us build programming that's meaningful. So it's it's kind of difficult to narrow down a target audience because it we're trying to work with everyone. <laughs> we've run uh, ecology camps where we've taken youth out on the land and they've been part of like a monitoring project and they've tried to learn um, how water monitoring is happening while at the same time learning how to pluck ducks. So like there's like an ecology and like a traditional knowledge focus there. Uh, we've run language immersion camps where the focus is trying to teach people how to speak the language. Um, this f spring we're going to be trying to work to put implement some training programs to create new guardians. So the objective would be uh, to certify people in, in monitoring practices. So it depends a bit on the program what the objective would be. We really look to uh, people in the communities and elders to guide how we would approach things and how we would do it from a land-based perspective. And I think as a result, the outcome is really getting at the heart of issues like reconciliation and like working to strengthen language, culture, land-based practices through the programming that we, we try and put a lot of thought into designing. When I think about Indigenous education, it means having an opportunity to learn about our own histories, um, to learn in ways that are meaningful to um, the Dene. For, for us in the North, it's the Dene ways of, of understanding the world. Um, and also importantly, because there's been so much emphasis in a lot of our discussions with communities and elders, to me, um, language becomes like a really big part of also that Indigenous education. The one of the things the elders in our in our discussions always say is um, they they talk about like going out on the land and like how um, it's almost like their answer for everything <laughs> is to go out on the land um, and so to me that's also important when we think about indigenous education is um, getting those opportunities to go out on the land. There's lots to learn from um, discussions and workshops and. Um, you know, writing and reading, and but there's some things that you just can't learn unless you go out on the land, so. In the next 10 years, yeah, I want, I want this program to be like thriving and working 
across the region and I, I want to have like you know areas where there's places where we use traditionally that we have like camps set up so that way we can have youth going out there on a regular seasonal basis not just during easy months to get out on land like the summer um, I want guardians in like all of our communities doing all of this work I want our, like our little kids our little babies to grow up and be like our guardians um, yeah I want to see kids talking to their elders in the language I want to see all those things happening um, I think that's probably uh, some of the highlights of why some of these things become meaningful because we're trying to create programming that's meaningful to our communities and um, is addressing um, issues that our communities are facing. So. In order to have like a thriving stewardship and guardians program, core funding is a huge part of it. A huge challenge for us is um, year-to-year resources for um, for the work that we say is important. Right now we operate year-to-year -year on funding and we operate off of many many different little pots that we kind of sew together and yeah manage and try and quilt together a, a program from. Um, so it's a big challenge. So core funding, stable multi-year core funding is like really high up there but the second part is also um, human capacity because right now uh, we need to just we just need more people involved in like moving the work forward but to do to get more people you also need more funding so it kind of it's a bit of a circular thing